Welcome to News 12 at 5. I'm Maureen King. And I'm Dan Thomas. An Atoka store clerk in critical condition right now, a suspect in jail charged with her shooting. News 12's Jen Phillips is at the convenience store where it all happened. And Jen, what are police telling you? They're always, always just the flames constantly start to grow and the fight, smoke getting bigger. Two people are dead after a car and semi collide on the Roosevelt Bridge. What happened after the crash? Good evening. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. A semi plowed through the guardrail on the Roosevelt Bridge into Lake Texoma this afternoon in a deadly crash. That's right. We do have reporters on the scene, but we can tell you that the troopers are saying just before 2 this afternoon, a red car and a semi truck hit head on. You see the aftermath right there. Some of that railing coming off of the bridge. It was on the eastern part of the Roosevelt Bridge in Marshall County over Lake Texoma. That car burst into flames and the semi went through the guardrail into the lake where it is now fully submerged. Both drivers were killed. The highway shut down in both directions and will remain that way for several more hours, likely. Troopers are asking drivers to stay away from the area, especially if you need to get to the other side of the lake. OHP Lieutenant Scott Hampton says it is shut down uh, right now, and you can see some of the pictures coming in from viewers right there immediately after it happened. As of right now, we have an active spill that is moving south from the south side of the bridge through the river channel here on the Roosevelt Bridge, and we're currently working down uh, to, to get the bill of laden of what that is. And that was Lieutenant Scott Hampton said that semi caused a spill in the water. They're working on it right now. That's right. News 12's Meredith McCallum is out there on the lake with more on that, Meredith. We've got some breaking news that we're following right now. The former Davis High School teacher who tried to marry one of her students has reached a deal with prosecutors to avoid further jail time. District Attorney Craig Ladd tells us his office made the deal with 35-year-old Cassandra White at the request of the 16-year-old and his family. The state dropped its solicitation case in exchange for White pleading guilty to four counts of felony computer crimes. Ladd says White will spend the next 10 years on probation, surrender her teaching license, undergo psychological treatment, and serve 200 hours of community service, all as part of that deal. She was arrested back in April after she and a boy filed for a marriage license last December. That teen's father signed off on the deal. She resigned from Davis Schools the next day. At least 30 homes flooded in Bonham. Why one woman risked her safety to go back inside. Trapped by flood water having chest pains, who first responders called in to get one man out. And a head of cattle slipped away by flood waters. The measures some Good Samaritans went to to save some of them. News 12 at 6 starts now. Texoma's number one rated newscast, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 6 p.m. This was going to be our forever home. <laughs> About 30 homes on Lake Bonham flooded. Residents now picking up the pieces and recovering what they can. Good evening. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. People who live near Lake Bonham are cleaning up after the torrential rains overwhelmed the spillway and flooded about 30 homes. News 12's Kristen Weaver shares the story of a woman who's fighting to recover from the flood while her husband fights for his life. A close call for an Atoka man this morning. He called 911 but they couldn't get to him because of the flooded roads. News 12 Stan Smith spoke to his unlikely rescuer about how he was able to get there. A Sherman house filled with tear gas as police work for two hours to bring two fugitives to justice. Good evening, welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. Two men are in jail tonight accused of shooting a Bonham man running off, then getting into a standoff with police in Sherman last night. We find News 12's Kristen Weaver in that Sherman neighborhood where they barricaded themselves. Now, Kristen, how did police get the men to come out of that house? All right, well, another part of Texoma hard hit by floodwaters, Pontotoc County and the Ada area. News 12's Crystal Martinez spoke to the county emergency manager about the damage left behind and to one man who lost several head of cattle in the floodwaters. 
Well, several law enforcement agencies have now stepped in after parents made threats to harm a 12 year old actually ISD student on social media last week. News 12's Kristen Weaver spoke with the girl's mother about what they're doing to move forward. And the sheriff says that the mother filed a protective order against one of those parents that made the comments online. No arrests have been made. However, special several agencies, including the FBI, are now investigating to see if any comments constitute a hate crime. A Carter County couple is behind bars and facing charges of child abuse, enabling child abuse and child neglect. News 12's Crystal Martinez tells us about the conditions law enforcement says they found five children living in and what they say was happening to at least two of them inside. All right, well, the weekend flooding has left dozens of Texoma roads closed. The longest list is in Fannin County. That includes Farm to Market Roads 100 and 1396 of Bodark Creek, as well as over a dozen county roads closed. Several bridges have been washed out as well. The good news, though, handful of Grayson County roads closed over the weekend. All have reopened. No reports of any road closures in Cook or Lamar counties. And over on the Oklahoma side, several roads remain closed in Pontotoc and Atoka counties. Ten county roads remain closed in the Ada area. Also, a handful of roads are still closed in Atoka County. Several highways, including 377, had to be shut down while the rain was falling Friday and Saturday, but all highways have since reopened. For a full list of Texoma road closures, check out KXII.com or the free KXII News app. A student at the University of Texas at Arlington was killed by the flood waters. Alan Amaya drowned Friday in a creek on the university campus during heavy rain. He was 23 years old and from El Paso. According to a GoFundMe page, he was involved in the math department and was known for being a loving and helpful person. Well, the heavy rain and flooding have caused a train to derail in Farmersville, or is believed to cause that. Officials say 11 train cars were involved. No one was hurt. There was no hazardous material released. The area around the crash site will be closed until further notice. 19 people were arrested after a three-month-long investigation by the Cook County Sheriff's Office Drug Enforcement Unit. Authorities say these people operate in several different organized crime groups in North Texas and Southern Oklahoma. They're involved in drugs, weapons, and stolen goods trafficking in Cook, Denton, Grayson, and Love counties. They're accused of selling meth and mu mushrooms. One suspect alone was arrested with 263 grams of meth valued at around $26,000. State and local law enforcement agencies from across the involved counties helped out in that investigation. An Ardmore man found guilty today for attempted burglary and proposing lewd acts to a child under 16 years of age. Five months ago, Ardmore police arrested 45-year-old Shane Hawley after they were called to Harvey Road by a family who claimed Hawley was prowling and peeping in their windows. Police say they later found Hawley, a neighbor to the family, had also made proposals to a girl. Hawley will be back in court later this month for sentencing. Well, a car shop was destroyed by fire this morning in Pottsboro. Happened just after 1130 off LC Drive. A woman who was inside working tells us that a car part exploded. She tried to put out the flames, but was not successful. The chemicals and gas in the shop caused several explosions. And then the second floor collapsed. A crane pulled material out of the shed before firefighters could get in there to put it out. Nobody was hurt. The place just started billowing big balls of fire out of it. And then there was pop, 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 and it went on for probably 15 minutes. It was insane. Well, the shed, dubbed Art's Bug House, was used to repair and remodel Volkswagen Beetles. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Well, a silent demonstration was held in Atchley this morning in support of a seventh grade Atchley student who was threatened online. News Tolls Kristen Weaver shares the meaning behind the demonstration. Well, the superintendent's job duties are going to be discussed at a special meeting of the Fort Towson School Board tonight. This comes after students captured video and pictures that appear to show him texting while driving a school bus. News Tolls Meredith McCowan has been following the story. She's live in Fort Towson. Meredith, what's going on? 86 over Paris. 
So a big win for the Lady Vikings tonight against yeah. against Paris. Yeah, no mercy rule there, I guess. No, huh? no, they're playing well, you know, for a startup program especially. The first mm -hmm. year back, and they're they're doing good. Yeah, all right, good yeah. for them. Must have been a fun game to watch. Yeah. All right, well, as long as you're rooting for, for Paris. Yeah. 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 For some of them, yeah. Long <laughs> not for Paris. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.